offense. So if their shots aren't falling, they still need to do the other things on the defensive end and rebounding and all, all the other stuff because the shots eventually will fall, but the other stuff has to be constant. Yeah, we talk about it all the time. I mean, basketball is a humbling game, right? Like you just don't always make your shots, but you can control how your effort on the defensive end. You can control your effort on the, on the glass. Um, and for the most part, I would say for about three quarters, we did that. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, who was in the stands, I, I hope you appreciated the energy. I thought our team did a really good job of having fun um, playing basketball again and having fun playing with each other. Uh, we got a boiler up here for my friend Hacksaw in Littlestown, Pennsylvania. And he said, Katie, you made watching women's basketball fun again Sunday. Love the up-tempo and the man defense. You said last week you're going to play man defense. You did that. You said you were going to run, and you did that too. Yeah, we did that, and, you know, that's what we, we want to do. Um, you know, we, you just, we say it all the time, let's just shoot it before we turn it over because if we pass up an open shot, chances are we might turn it over eventually. So, um, and, and we do want to play 94 feet of basketball, um, you know, and, and, and our team is right now, they've, they've bought into that. Uh, it, it's fun playing that, and it's fun playing with each other and for each other. Finley was playing its third game in five days, and they were shorthanded because of some COVID protocol. So, basically, they played zone the entire game. 36 three-point shots for you out of 77 attempts. Is that more than you would like to see, or did, were you happy because the shots were open? Yeah, we, we, took, some, we took some good shots, um, some questionable ones, but I think that, that happens in a game of basketball. Um, 36 is a lot. I think, you know, if that was a, that was a real game, it's probably what I think it was a record. Um, but, you know, Cass got hot, and, and Madison got some open looks that, you know, we would, we would think that she's normally going to make. And, uh, you know, the ball moved around the perimeter and, and we made extra passes, but we've got to get, we've got to get an inside presence. Um, you know, we have to score in the paint, whether, whether we're throwing it in the paint or we're, we're getting paint touches off of dribble drives. But, you know, they did, they did zone us for 40 minutes. And, you know, I'll be honest with everybody, we've literally just put in zone offenses like last week. So, I mean, that's how far behind the eight ball we are. Uh, you had Cassidy Harden on the show last week, and you said her big role, or certainly you know, a key role for her, is to shoot the basketball. She got into a rhythm yesterday, and I think the only thing you'd like to see is when she's in a rhythm like that, shoot it even more than you are. Yeah, she passed up another one. She had three or four in a row and then passed up another one. I, I, I mean, what are you doing? <laughs> then we run a set in the second half, and she passes it up, and I'm like, what are you doing? You know, the... She's never going to get yelled at for taking a shot. If she's open, you know, no rules really apply for her. She's got the green light. Well, and, and, and again, she got into the rhythm. But I think with Cassidy, we've seen her intelligence away from the basketball. You know, she's not going to win athletic awards in terms of her quickness and speed. So she's got to anticipate things, and she's able to do that. With you know, biochemistry major, they, they're pretty smart. Yeah, she is, she's smart. And uh, I know all about not being athletic. Um, I know all about that, and, um, you know, the, we'd be remiss if we didn't say anything about Cass Harden's block shot yesterday because yes. she flew out of nowhere, and <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. And she hits a three, comes down, Jayla gets back door, she comes and blocks a shot, and then Madison finds her on the other end, and she hits another three. I mean, I about came out of my pants over there. So. My, I, my guess is she's going to remember that block shot a lot more than the six three-pointers that she hit yesterday. Yeah, I talked to her and her folks after the game, and, uh, yeah, we, uh, we gave her a hard time for that one. Uh, you had three players that didn't suit up yesterday because of injuries, so let's talk about the, the timeline on those three, starting with Sky Williams, who you really haven't had a chance to see yet this season. Yeah, Sky's here uh, having a little – Little, you know, having Madison's back over there, but uh, Sky's been a great culture piece for us. She's just a, a great joy to be around, and you know, had surgery this summer, and I think she's making some steps. And right now, it's just you know, let's just get her back on the court. Um, you know, whatever we choose to do, I, th I think we've got to get her on the court and get her comfortable. But I think she's making steps. You know, getting on the elliptical and 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 you know, progressing r really well that way. Rokia Dumbia out for you for a while. Yeah, she uh, she twisted her ankle, I guess, last Saturday in a scrimmage against the guys. Pretty good. And she's, you know, first initial was a good month. And I think she's probably a little, coming along a little bit better than that right now. All the swelling is out and, and you know, still in a boot, but uh, on the elliptical on the bike. And, you know, she just gives us another form of athleticism, um, especially, you know, if we choose to play small at the four spot um, with her ability to, to get downhill and, and make plays for, for other t other people. And then we also did not see Roxanne McColo suited up yesterday. Yeah, Rox had a, a little, you know, she's coming back from ACL and just flared up her knee a little bit. MRI was clean. Um, so just kind of taking taking it careful, um, you know, with her. And, uh, you know, just her athleticism can give us another, you know, another boost on the perimeter. All right, we're coming to you from Wolfie's. We'll have more of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. 
out to the quarterback, 10th of the country in sacks. Here they come against O'Connell. He's in trouble, and he breaks free. Pump fakes, throws, ends on touchdown. It's David Bell, third catch on that drive. Boilermakers hit first. Michigan at number seven. O'Connell throws complete for a first down. Garrett Miller is loose and then stumbles down to the 47-yard line. Tough sledding against this Michigan State front. Four-man rush. O'Connell pump fake. Now throws a deep ball. Going for Bell. And Bell caught it inside the 10. The defender fell down. So now second and goal for the Boilermakers after the two-yard loss. O'Connell to the end zone. And the pass is pulled in. Brock Thompson. Touchdown, Purdue. Anthrop moving into the backfield, and here comes a reverse and then a throw. And it's Anthrop who originally got the handoff that gets the catch. And he's loose inside the 25, reversing field inside the 15, gets a block inside the 10 to the end zone. Touchdown, Purdue! They run it though to Doru, pushing forward. O'Connell's been too good to take off the field. Let's see what he does in third and ten. Taking a shot. Bell somehow is left open. Makes the catch inside the 30-yard line. Inside the 20. Fighting for arm tackles. They finally get him down. O'Connell facing pressure. Gets out of there. He throws on the run. And along the sideline, is it caught? Yes. They're going to say a catch is made by Miller. He was enormous in the fourth against Michigan last week. They fake it to him. Thorne in trouble. Steps up. Wrapped up. Got back to the line of scrimmage before he spun down by some... Boilermakers and Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers will tip it off Wednesday night, 7.30 Eastern. So we'll have that one at 7.15. The home opener is Sunday against Western Michigan. That tip-off has been moved back half an hour to 2.30. So we'll have that pregame starting at 2.15. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about your game yesterday. Abby Ellis getting the start at point guard, your first Australian. I love hearing, I love hearing any Australian talk. It's just kind of cool to hear. But uh, what does she bring to this team? Uh, just honestly, just full effort for all 40 minutes, um, all 94 feet. Uh, she's, her motor's just always going. Um, and, and she was a little nervous yesterday, um, you know, play, you know, from Cal Poly and, and coming here and playing in Mackey Arena for the first time. But I thought she settled in. She had a good three for us, got to the paint. Um, she's just going to be crafty. You know, she's got a like, European style to her, uh, international flair that, that can do different things that we don't normally see here in the States. And um, she's, just, she's a joy to coach. She's, she's a joy to be around and, and just kind of li lifts everyone's spirit. Another one of your transfers, Janae Terry from Illinois. And I was, you know, I was a little surprised when I looked down at the box score after the game and realized she had 10 points and 10 rebounds. A very quiet double-double. That's kind of been her M.O. of the few years she's been at Illinois. Yeah, I know you've, you've probably seen it, um, what she's done against us here in the last couple of years. But you, and honestly, I didn't even realize it either until, until we were talking after the game. Um, she's just going to stuff a stat sheet. Uh, she's she's going to get her points. She's going to get the rebounds. I, mean, I think she had six offensive, um, you know, and her ability to just make plays for her teammates. Um, she she understands how the game is supposed to be played, and and she's so selfless that sometimes I wish she would she would be a little bit more aggressive. But she's have she, I mean she's just fallen in love playing alongside Madison and Cass because she's got, you know, she she tells me often I didn't have those shooters at Illinois and now I do, so it's fun. Mide Oriyami also played quite a bit yesterday, uh, fouled out in the fourth quarter, but what did you see from her and her time on the floor? Just, you know, what we talked about last week, her versatility, her ability to guard one through four, uh, great length. Uh, you know, she did give us a, some buckets inside as well. Um, she hit a three, but, you know, she's been doing a good job of trying to understand how to play with um, the, the, her teammates right now. And, you know, if we can we can get her calmed down offensively, she, she does such a good job for us defensively with her length um, and her ability to guard multiple positions. Uh, you know, just, she's just going to find herself on a, on a court. You know, we talked last week about the differences in college basketball over the years, and one of the biggest things I've seen is you used to say this person is a two or this person's a four. They had a position. You talk about the ability to play multiple positions. That really has become a requisite now for most college basketball players. Yeah, you want you want kids who can just play play different spots, the versatility. Um, and, you, and you look at the, the makeup of our team. I mean, if Madison rebounds it, she can push it. 
Um, same with JT, same with Abby Cass, you know, Jayla Brooke off the bench, whoever's in, even Mide too, but really, you know, she can, she can dribble the ball up the court and transition. And it's, it gives us such a, you know, a different option, but th their ability to, to do that offensively, but then guard multiple positions on the defensive end is, is huge. And we've got to take advantage of it. You know, going back again to playing for the first time in front of a live audience, uh, it's not just your freshmen and your transfers yesterday. I mean, the kids that were freshmen last year had not played in front of a live audience at Mackey either. Friends and family, but there wasn't a whole lot of noise in the arena last season. Yeah, it, it, I think I saw a stat that we had 10 kids on our team yesterday that had never played in front of Mackey Arena fans. And, and we had a decent crowd for an exhibition game. Hopefully they enjoy, <laughs> enjoyed it enough that maybe they grabbed somebody else and, and bring them next Sunday against Western Michigan. But... Um, it'd be good to see that lower bowl filled again. And um, I think the more people start to, to come, I think the more they'll fall in love with how we're going to play basketball this year. All right, we're coming to you from Wolfie's back with more in two minutes on the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Eric Hunter on the run. He'll attack the basket. Pep score with a right hand. Block shot by Brandon Newman at the rim. Panther comes in motion. They hand it to him on a reverse. Now a double reverse. A pitch back to O'Connell. They're going to throw a screen pass. This is Anthrop. He's at the 35. He's at the 30. He's at the 25. Still on his feet to the middle of the field. He's at the 20. He's at the 15. He's at the 10. Still on his feet to the near sideline. Five. Touchdown! Touchdown! Boilermakers! <laughs> a 39-yard flea flicker from O'Connell to Anthrop. And Purdue stretches the lead 20-7. to seven. They go to Cleveland. No, they go back to Ellis. This time she goes through the corner. Emma Ellis being leaned on there to finish off that third set. She does the job, and Purdue takes a two sets to one lead. Colvin nearly blocked by McNamara. Here's Newton. Bush goes to Cleveland, right through the corner. Grace Cleveland, power and precision. Uh, Dave Shondell is coach. That was the first thing he talked about with all this senior leadership. The ability to get Caitlin Newton back for a fifth year after the COVID short season. A smart and the right move by the NCAA. Boyadinovich blocked back, Allison. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Mackey Arena. Before we uh, continue with Katie, I want to congratulate Drew Roth and the women's soccer team playing now in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2009. They will uh, host Loyola Chicago later this week and then uh, hopefully move on to the second round. You know, you've got basketball has started. I think people are excited for both the men's and women's teams. Football had a huge win. Volleyball is, is running. You know, I asked Dave Shondell earlier today if this builds on it on itself. And, you know, it seems like you've got a lot of momentum in this athletic program. Yeah, what a fall we've had. I mean, the football team, massive win on the, you know, at home. Uh, what That scene, right? Like, yeah. Just that scene. It was a straight mosh pit. That was, that was really Well, cool. now your team was the team of the game, right? So you were down on the field during the game. I'm going to say we brought all the luck that day. but uh, Were you all down on the field after the game? I wasn't there. We were out recruiting. All right. Were you guys on the field? No. No. Well, that's probably safer. Yeah. Because I was a little probably. concerned about that crush of humanity in there. <laughs> no, that's just awesome. And congratulations to, to soccer. And, you know, Dave's doing a, a, you know, a hell of a job. And, you know, can't wait to watch uh, Paint's team play this year. Um, you know, it's going to be it's, – it's, what a great time to be a Boilermaker. Loyal watcher Ira checking in from Wisconsin. Uh, can't tell you how impressed I was with the difference in the team yesterday. Love the up-tempo. Looked like they were having fun and playing like a team. If KG made this much difference in a month, can't wait to see what the future holds. And I think a lot of fans feel that way. What do you feel like you've been able to get accomplished here in the last, what, seven weeks or so? Yeah, we're just trying to take steps. I and mean, we're not going to, you know, we're not building a wall right now. But if we can just put one brick on at a time, 
uh, and just take one step. And as cliche as that sounds, you know, that's that we can't skip a step. Um, we've got to make sure we just build it right from the bottom or right from the bottom all the way to the top. And you know, the credit goes to our, our team. They've bought in. You know, our, the staff has done a, a really good job of you know helping me along the way and. And you know, and, and giving me confidence to, to believe that my stuff is good enough, um, and they've they've learned and, and understood what we're going to do. But the, the, you know, all, all the credit in the world goes to to, to the girls because they've been they bought in and um, they understand like, hey, you know, why not? Let's let's go do it. Well, let's talk about one of those players who actually will be talking with in a few minutes here, and that's Madison Layden. Um, Jane Schott is a broadcast partner of mine, head coach at West Lafayette. So I had a chance to see Madison from her freshman year on play for Northwestern. And you could see the improvement year over year. She would add something to her game every year. What does she bring to your team, and what do you expect from her yeah. at that guard position? Everything. Um, we, we, we expect a lot from Madison. and we, we, She needs to be an all-Big Ten performer for us. Um, you know, not just scoring the basketball. She's got to take shots, miss or make them. I mean, she's got to take them. Uh, but I, I thought she did a great job on the glass on Sunday. Um, even on the offensive end, we challenged her to give us some, you know, with her length to give us some second chances. And uh, her length on the defensive end, she's always done a really good job of, you know, understanding and, and being in right spots. But her length, get, you know, getting out, getting deflections. Um, but we do, we we just we we need everything from her, and and she knows that, and she's she's stepped up to it, and you know she's you know her and Cass have come in, and we've got some extra stuff done in the gym. Uh, we're just working on a little footwork and. Uh, you know, I think Madison's going to – she's going to have a great season for us, but uh, I'm excited to coach her for the rest of her career. You know, another player that I think you're going to be counting on this year to bring you energy, particularly in the role that she has right now as a sixth player, is Brooke Moore because she's got the ability to score for you off the bench, and that's always important for a team to have something that you can get off the bench production-wise. Yeah, I know, and, and Brooke has done a really good job of buying into that for us right now. You know, we, you know I tell her – you know, I've told her basically, like, hey, if we start you, then – you know, we're going to try to get Madison going. We've got to get an inside presence. Um, we're going to get JT and Cass some looks. So you're probably going to miss out on those opportunities. You, we bring you in off the bench, and, you know, you've got this six-man role, six role of the Jordan Clarkson role, the, the Kelsey Plum role, where you can just come in and, and be you. And um, she's really bought into that. Um, you know, she's, she's doing a, a better job of making sure she's taking the right shots. Um, mm -hmm. I think a little anxious on, on Sunday. But, but she's bought into it completely, and she's been she's – been, an incredible teammate for, for us to be around. Uh, it's way before her time, but a guy named John Havlicek made himself a pretty good career in the NBA Hall of Famer as a sixth man. So you yeah, can get Hondo. a lot of stuff done off the bench. Yeah, Hondo, absolutely. Right, we're going to talk with Madison Layden. She'll be with us next. It is the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. And this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Ellis now pump faking, driving in. Euro step high off the glass. And the Boilers offense. Off to a hot start, 14-4. I'm take a timeout. Terry, Terry trying to find something out in the corner. Another three, Jayla Smith. She hits the mark. We'll have it left side. Showing this offense in the Walton. Walton overhead pass to Terry. Terry trying to find something out in the corner. Another three, Jayla Smith. She hits the mark. Boiler fans eating it up. And a block on the other end. Boilers adding this lead late in, driving in. She'll adjust here off to Harden. Harden, a heat check again. Cass Harden. It is hot here. Away by the Oilers. In transition, Landon gets blocked on the layup. Brooke Moore reaching up and grabbing that one out. Ellis controls it. Off to Moore, Moore finding Oriomi down low. Boilermaker still working this ball around the perimeter as a great pass inside. Ellis to Oriomi. He's voted a team captain this year. Leading by example, exactly. And one bucket and the free throw. Chance for a large three point play. Pierce down low in the paint, gathering. Another rebound in transition. Layden pulling up downtown, cashes in. Madison Layden pouring it on. Boilers back up to a 23 point lead. It's a timeout taken on the floor. We'll take one. Back to Brooke Moore last season as she pump fakes there. Made multiple threes in 27 career games as she fires from down. We're for the Boilermakers.
Jayla Smith. Nice deep. Welcome back to Wolfies. It's time for the Pro Boilers feature, where we look at how former Purdue student-athletes are doing their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler-made. We talked last week about a few of our former women's basketball players playing overseas. Wanted to uh, add a name. Andriana Keys has started her season in Romania. Uh, through three games, she's averaging 21.7 points. 7.3 rebounds and 4.3 assists a game. Uh, last week, KK Hauser playing in Poland had a huge game. This is a one game stat sheet 25 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, and 3 steals. And finally, Ariana Harris in Belgium had a game last week with 13 points and 9 rebounds. So great to see our former Boilermakers doing well overseas. Joined by a current Boilermaker now. Madison Layden, who comes to us from Kokomo from Northwestern High School. You had the opportunity to play for your mom and your dad, who is a part of that staff. Talk about playing for a parents in, on your coaching staff in high school. The good things about it and the things that maybe were a little tougher. Uh, yeah, um, it was really fun, obviously. Uh, my senior year, I was able to play with my sister. Um, so, I mean, it was hard, obviously. Um, if things got heated in practice going home that night, you never know uh, what you're going to expect. But, you know, I wouldn't want it any other way. So it was a good four years. Were you able to separate? I, I don't know if they were able to separate. Were you able to separate and say, okay, we're home now, Mom and Dad. I just want to be Madison. I don't want to be a basketball player tonight. I just want to be Madison. Um, some days were worse than others. You know, it, if I didn't practice well, then it was harder at night. But, you know, uh, we got over it. So I'm yeah. guessing with the fact that both of them played collegiately um, and, you know, they, they had a couple of daughters who are pretty good basketball players. You probably had a basketball in your hand from a pretty early age. Yeah, definitely. Uh, ever since I was born, I was in the gym. Uh, I mean, my mom was always coaching, so I was just always there with her. Now, what, what point did you realize that, hey, maybe my skills are good enough. I could play collegiately. I can, I can get a free education this way. Where, where, when did that start to that realization sink in that you had some talent? Uh, yeah, definitely, I think, middle school. Um, I started to get a little bit of looks from colleges, and I started to take a few visits. Uh, so definitely became real then that that was a possibility. Well, not only did you play for your mom as your head coach, but you played on a couple of state championship teams. Talk about that experience and how that's been able to help you here as you've come to Purdue. Yeah, I mean, that was a lot of fun. Um, so I think that just helped me, obviously, playing at Banker's Life with so many fans there. Um, now carrying over, playing at Mackey, um, it's the same feel. So, yeah. It was awesome. Fishermen talk all the times about the one that got away. You almost had three straight state championships, lost your senior year, and Jayla Smith was on the other side of that. Now she's a teammate. Uh, is that a bygone thing, or do you still talk <laughs> about that game? Yeah, no, we don't talk about it. <laughs> no, Jayla was unbelievable that game. So, I mean, just having her here with me is just special. Talk about the decision then to drive up I or not I up I sixty five. I guess down on thirty one State Road thirty one and and come in and be a boilermaker. What drew you here to West Lafayette? Um, I mean, yeah, I wanted to stay close to home, and obviously the coaches and the players. Um, I really I felt the best connection with them. So. Yeah. And your major had a huge part of that, wasn't it? Uh, that big part of your decision. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I decided that I wanted to major in pharmacy, so obviously Purdue is the best pharmacy. Now, you've got a couple of – Asia Stallings is also a pharmacy major. I, I, I roomed with a pharmacy major in college, and I know that that's a pretty tough road to hoe. Uh, how have you been able to balance the books and the basketball? Uh, yeah, it's definitely been tough. Um, but, you know, uh, having Breeze, the Breeze Center to study at um, – I've spent a lot of hours there. So I think just balancing that and basketball. Yeah. Talk, talk about the transition last year. And I've talked to a lot of Purdue students. It was very difficult. I think it was difficult for all students last year coming back, and especially those who hadn't had a regular college experience. I mean, everybody's been masked. Uh, you come into Mackey Arena, there are no fans there, a few family and friends. What was that first year like? Uh, yeah, it was really hard. Um, coming in as a freshman and having all your classes be online and – pretty much not being able to see anyone. So, um, yeah, not playing playing with no fans um, was hard. But now, you know, it's it's back to normal pretty much. So it's, it's awesome. Did your basketball family take on more importance, the fact that you didn't have contact maybe with as many students as you would in a normal year? Was it a tighter group, or how did that work last season? 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, we had to rely on each other more, I think, um, just because we weren't allowed to go out and do much. So, you know, we had to spend a lot of time together. All right, we're talking with Madison Layden. We'll have more with her after a couple-minute of break. This is the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, and this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Get after the quarterback, 10th of the country in sacks. Here they come against O'Connell. He's in trouble, and he breaks free. Pump fakes, throws, ends up, touchdown! It's David Bell, third catch on that drive. Boilermakers hit first. Michigan at number seven. O'Connell throws complete for a first down. Garrett Miller is loose and then stumbles down to the 47-yard line. Tough sledding against this Michigan State front. Four-man rush. O'Connell pump fake. Now throws a deep ball. Going for Bell. And Bell caught it inside the 10. The defender fell down. So now second and goal for the Boilermakers after the two-yard loss. O'Connell to the end zone. Moving into the backfield, and here comes a reverse and then a throw. And it's Anthrop who originally got the handoff that gets the catch. And he's loose inside the 25, reversing field inside the 15, gets a block inside the 10 to the end zone. Touchdown, Purdue! They run it though to Doru, pushing forward and in. Touchdown, Purdue has the lead back. O'Connell's been too good to take off the field. Let's see what he does in third and ten. Taking a shot. Bell somehow is left open. Makes the catch inside the 30-yard line. Inside the 20. Fighting for arm tackles. They finally get him down. O'Connell facing pressure. Gets out of there. He throws on the run. And along the sideline, is it caught? Yes. They're going to say a catch is made by Miller. He was enormous in the fourth against Michigan last week. They fake it to him. Thorne in trouble. Steps up. Wrapped up. Got back to the line of scrimmage before he spun down by Sullivan. They scored. Back to the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Mackey Arena. OG Dave and all the folks here at Wolfie's with us tonight. Um, I had a question during the break, and it was one I was going to bring up anyway, but you were sitting here talking with Madison Layden, and Madison does not have any glasses uh, of any sort on. You do wear the goggles during the game. Is that something you've always done? Yes. Yep. Uh, ever since I was little, I've always just worn the goggles just to protect my eyes. So, yep. And it's worked so far. Yep. All right. Uh, let's talk about that freshman season. You were an all-Big Ten freshman player. Give me a critique of how you thought you played in your first season. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, obviously, I struggled some games as a freshman just because I guess I was a freshman. But, you know, I think this year I'm trying to step up into a bigger role for the team um, and just be a better leader this year, especially. Uh, you had a coaching change. Uh, Katie Geralds came in and was going to be the associate head coach. And then when Coach V retired, she took over the head the coaching job this year. Talk about playing for Katie and the style that she wants to bring in. Yeah, yeah. Um, super exciting this year obviously our game yesterday I think we all had a lot of fun um, pushing the ball in transition and uh, just the up tempo that we want to play um, and yeah I'm just excited for the rest of the games you had the opportunity over the summer you were invited to the USA basketball U19 trials uh, talk about that experience and what you were able to take away from that that's helped you this season yeah, um, that was awesome just to be nominated for that. Um, and it was such a cool experience um, just playing with all those girls because um, I didn't really know any of them. So just being able to meet them and um, just le learned a lot. And uh, I think I was able to bring that back for the team. Also feel like you belonged out there, right? I mean, that's, that, I mean, that's part of the whole thing. Yeah. When you go to a trial like that, it's, you've got to believe that you are one of the best players. And you know, that, that this half the battle is mental when you go into a situation like that. Yeah, definitely. You have to have a lot of confidence. Um, and I think I was preparing for that over the summer. So, yeah. I talked to Coach uh, before uh, you came on here about uh, her first trip down the tunnel as the head coach. This was your first trip down the tunnel yesterday with fans in the stands. So what was it like? Any, any nervousness? Now, you've, you've played in front of big crowds before in state championship games, but this was a little bit different. Yeah, um, personally, I didn't have a whole lot of nerves. Um, 
I just thought it was just so fun to see everyone there. And, um, yeah, just excited for hopefully more and more people to come. Uh, some basketball players, some athletes are superstitious. Do you have any certain routines that you go through on game day, any things that you have to eat? Do you put your socks on in a certain order? What, what's the Madison Layden regimen on game day? I don't have any. Nope. I just do whatever. You just do whatever. Well, <laughs> yeah. that's, you know, sometimes it's uh, winging it's the best way to yeah. do it. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the potential of this basketball team. You start the real season about 48 hours from now. We'll be somewhere down in uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, playing against the Hilltoppers. Uh, what can fans expect this year from this basketball team? Yeah, um, hopefully a lot. Um, I think we have a lot of talent, and, um, you know, I'm just excited to see everyone. Uh, obviously, we have a lot of new pieces, and I think we're all working really well together. So, yeah. Well, Madison, it was great to see you yesterday with fans in the stands. Look forward to seeing you in the regular season opener. Have a great season, and uh, good luck this year. Thank you. All right, we'll have the head coach back with us in two minutes. It is the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, and this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Shot by Brandon Newman at the rim. Anther comes in motion. They hand it to him on a reverse. Now a double reverse. A pitch back to O'Connell. They're going to throw a screen pass. This is Anthrop. He's at the 35. He's at the 30. He's at the 25. Still on his feet to the middle of the field. He's at the 20. He's at the 15. He's at the 10. Still on his feet to the near sideline. Five. Touchdown! <laughs> Boilermakers! A 39-yard flea flicker from O'Connell to Anthrop. And Purdue stretches the lead 20-7. to seven. They go to Cleveland. No, they go back to Ellis. This time she goes through the corner. Emma Ellis being leaned on there to finish off that third set. She does the job, and Purdue takes a two sets to one lead. Colvin nearly blocked by McNamara. Here's Newton. Bush goes to Cleveland, right through the corner. Grace Cleveland, power and precision. Uh, Dave Shondell is coach. That was the first thing he talked about with all this senior leadership. The ability to get Caitlin Newton back for a fifth year after the COVID short season. A smart and the right move by the NCAA. Koyadinovich blocked back. It is the Katie Gerald Show from Wolfie's. We'll be back uh, here next uh, Monday night at 7.10 for another edition of the show. By the way, the women's soccer tournament game, the NCAA tournament game, has been announced now. It's a 7 o'clock start at Folk Field on Saturday night, Purdue against Loyola Chicago. So you can plan your whole weekend around Purdue sports. You've got uh, the women's volleyball team. Well, first of all, the women's basketball team playing Wednesday night after the men play tomorrow night. You've got volleyball on Friday and Sunday. You've got soccer now on Saturday, and the Purdue football game will kick off at 3.30, so that should just be ending as the soccer game begins. We try to tie all these things together so all the Boilermaker fans can see everything. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? It is pretty awesome. So what a great time of the year. Uh, we have a question about uh, somebody wanted to know if you're superstitious because you had your hair down in the first half and you had your hair up in the second half. Yeah, I, I am superstitious, but that... That had nothing to do with Sunday. It was just weird to be in sweats on the sideline and not, not heels. So um, is that is that going to be a, a continuing thing going forward? I think we're still kind of figuring it out. Um, you know, we we had originally said we're gonna we're gonna dress up on home games and then be casual on the road. So uh, yeah, I think it's still kind of up in the air. All right. Well, you know, you got to be comfortable. That's that's we, the big thing. We just thing. gotta 
We're working on Coach Kucher's shoe game over there. We got to get her some Jordans um, <laughs> over there on the sideline. Yeah, that's that is the most important thing. If nothing else, your feet have to be comfortable when, you, when you're doing this. All right, we haven't talked at all about your competition yet this week, and let's start with Western Kentucky. We had Western Kentucky in here two years ago, and you look at their roster in that game, and you look at Purdue's roster for that game, and there's not a whole lot of people still left. Yeah, it's kind of night and day, um, and even from last year, they 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 lost quite a bit. Uh, but, man, they've got some talented young kids. They scored 112 points yeah. in their exhibition game, um, really lit it up, and it seems just like they want to play up-tempo too, so it could be a track meet on Wednesday. Uh, but excited to get out there, you know, excited for the official start, excited for our first road trip as, as a team together. Um, I, and it, it's going to be a dogfight. They're, they're, they're good at home. You know, they've always been really good at home, and uh, Coach does a really good job down there, so we, we're going to have our hands full, and, and uh, we're, we're going to have to show up, and you know we're going to have to give it everything we got. And it's also an opportunity for you to see early on in the season, you will put together a scouting report. Can your players follow that scouting report and stick with the game plan? And you know you're going to have some good times and some bad times within the game. Can they keep on an even keel throughout? Yeah, we uh, thought we had a really good walkthrough today. Um, we did a little bit of we did a little something for Finley, uh, but. You know, Friday we actually we had a really intimate talk as a group on Friday, so um, really didn't practice on Friday and only spent one day on Finley. So now we're you know we, we had a great walkthrough today um, and, and talked about where we think what we think we need to do and, and watch a good film session tomorrow. We'll get after against our practice guys and jump on a plane and, and see what happens on Wednesday. You mentioned that you wanted to get more production from your post players. Uh, sometimes feeding the post is one of the hardest things a high school player has to do because they don't usually have to do that. In high school, I mean, if they're a great guard, they're shooting the basketball. They're not passing it inside. How hard is it to get that them acclimated to playing inside out? Yeah, it, I mean, you're right. Like, I, I mean, when I was in high school, I, I, mean, I was shooting it. <laughs> pass the ball to who? <laughs> what, what? Excuse <laughs> me, what? Who do you want me to pass it to? Uh, but no, we 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 talked today, and and you know, our, our bigs came up and watched some film um, with Alex and Beth, and. You know, you know, just talking about trying to try to let us see their numbers, um, and and when we see their numbers, the ball has to go in, and whether they whether they score it or not, but the ball has to touch the paint. Uh, and you know, we've got good size in there with Shea, Ricky, and Knox, um, and then we, we've got to be able to take advantage of it. They they've got to put, be able, we've got to throw it to them, and they've got to do something with it. Uh, defensively, uh, yesterday, a couple of times you you gave up some dribble penetration. That's something that I think you, you talked about. Your the way you defend it compared to the way the previous coach defended it might be a little bit different. Yeah. Well, talk about that transition. Yeah, it's different, and that's kind of where we lost our head there in the third quarter when we weren't making shots. Uh, but, you know, we're going to have to keep the ball out of the paint, and, and we do want to play and be aggressive for 94 feet and understand. And, and, and really, it's just it just comes down to trust, you know, trusting that you're going to have another line of defense and, you know, do, everybody's got to move and, and do their own part. But uh, – We've got to be able to guard the basketball on the bounce um, for more than one dribble, and, and it, it'll get better. It'll get better. You know, like I said, we've only been together for seven weeks um, in this kind of capacity, and, and, and for the most part, we've done a pretty good job of trying to understand, you know, what it looks like. And I think for three quarters we did a decent job, but uh, it's only going to get tougher from here on out. You know, one teaching point that I know you were talked about earlier, and, and you said the players held on to it pretty well, is any time we saw a player go down yesterday, we saw everybody else on the court sprint to pick them up. Um, it has to be gratifying to see your points are getting through here. Yeah, and, and it happens in practice too. You know, during a game you only see four kids run and, and grab their teammate, but in practice, I mean, it's – it's 12 or 13 sprinting to pick somebody up. And it just, you know, it, for anything, for your own psyche, it, it shows you that, that you're in this together. And, and it, it, you know, for it shows the other team, like, hey, man, this this team is together. They've got it together. And, and now it's just it's become a habit. Um, we're there for each other. We want to pick each other up when we're down. All right, we'll be back in two minutes on the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Ellis now pump faking, driving in, Eurostep high off the glass. And the Boilers offense off to a hot start, 14-4. I'm take a timeout. Terry, Terry trying to find something out in the corner. Another three, Jayla Smith, she hits the mark. We'll have it left side. Showing this offense in the Wolton. Wolton overhead pass to Terry. Terry trying to find something out in the corner. Another three, Jayla Smith. She hits the mark. Boiler fans eating it up. And a block on the other end. Boilers 
adding this lead late and driving in. She'll adjust here off to Harden. Harden, a heat check again. Cass Harden. It is hot here. Away by the Oilers. In transition, Landon gets blocked on the layup. Brooke Moore reaching up and grabbing that one out. As Ellis controls it. Off to Moore. Moore finding Oriomi down low. Boymaker still working this ball around the perimeter as a great pass inside. Ellis to Oriomi. He's voted a team captain this year. Leading by example, exactly. And one bucket and the free throw. Chance for a large three-point play. Here's down low in the paint, gathering. Another rebound in transition. Layden pulling up downtown. Cash is in. Madison Layden pouring it on. Boilers back up to a 23-point lead. It's a timeout taken on the floor. We'll take one. Back to Brooke Moore last season as she pump fakes there, made multiple threes in 27 career games as she fires from Denver for the Boilermakers. James. This week's game plan is presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, home of the official credit union for Purdue fans. Learn more at PurdueFed.com. Western Kentucky, we've talked about the fact it's likely to be an up-tempo style, so we could see a track meet. We may have to have batons along with basketballs in that one, but, you know, that's a fun style to play. It's a fun style to watch. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be on the sideline. I think our, our group is going to go out there. We're going we're gonna to go down there. We're going to compete hard. We're going to give it everything we have. Uh, Western Michigan coming up Sunday. We know this. They're a mid-American team, which means they're going to come in here with a little chip on their shoulder because a lot of the kids that play in the mid-American conference probably wanted to play at Power 5 conference schools. And so uh, we've seen enough of those schools in here over the years to know that they're, they'll, no matter what, they'll be a handful. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we've got to do a jo good job of protecting our home court. Um, hopefully we uh, get a little bit more than what we had, on, what we had yesterday. Uh, but excited to be back in, in, front, of my, uh, in front of our fans uh, in that capacity. But, you know, we, we might be a Power 5 school, but reality is reality. We, you know, we're, we're, we're where we are, and uh, we, we have to approach it that way every day that, hey, nothing, nothing, nothing can be taken for granted. We've got, we've got to bring it every day. You know, I talked to Madison earlier, and we talked a little bit about that state championship game with Jayla Smith that she does not want to discuss any further. The good news for you, though, is you have them both on your team now. Yeah. Talk about Jayla Smith and what she brings to the program. Yeah, Jayla's just, you know, by far our most athletic player, just explosive athletically. Uh, and, and she's going to have a very, very good career here. She's starting to figure things out. Um, you know, this summer she did a lot of growing up, and, and in the fall she's just she's just grown, especially the last couple of weeks off the court, um, who she is. And, you know, Indiana Miss basketball comes with a lot of pressure, but, you know, that kid is going to – she's going to be something special in, in a Purdue jersey. Yeah, and that is an, a title that not only is an honor but also comes with responsibility. She's the 10th Miss basketball. Uh, you understand that. I mean, the, the, the pressures that come with being a player in that stature, and all eyes are on you. Yeah, and, and I think she's starting to figure that out. And, and what a what a really really good young woman. Um, and she's she's been great off the court for us, and, and on the court she's she's just going to keep getting better. And um, she's going to be fun to coach for the next four years. The the Mackey faithful are really going to enjoy watching her play. Well, Katie, your countdown clock now is under 48 hours. I know you've been counting down to this regular season opener since you were named the head coach. Uh, we look forward to watching you Wednesday night. Look forward to getting on a plane and traveling again. That's the best the best part of this whole thing is being together for as a team for a, for a road trip. Yeah, we're excited. Uh, we're uh, we're going to give it everything we got down there. All right, we'll see you Wednesday night. Yeah, thanks, Tim. All right, the Boilermakers again will open their season on Wednesday night. Western Kentucky is the opponent. We'll have the broadcast starting at 7.15 with tip-off at Diddle Arena at 7.30. And then Purdue will be home for its regular season home opener on Sunday against Western Michigan. Now, your original schedule says 2 o'clock, but that's been moved to a 2.30 start. So we'll have that one at 2.15. Our engineer today, Wes Scott, our producer, Roger Forsyth. Again, we'll be back here at Wolfie's next Monday night at 7.10 for our next edition of the Katie Gerald Show. Until then, for the head coach, this is Tim Newton, and this is Boilermaker Basketball from Lear. Let's drive, baby. Let's drive. Every day, I said it in, the, in my press conference, play with a chip on your shoulder. 
all right? People think we are done. People think there's nothing about us anymore, okay? Play with that chip and get this place right. Why not? We don't have to wait three or four years. Let's get it right now. Let's get it right, right now, okay? Every day we bring it, every day. Let's go, good job. Yeah, nice nice job. We got boys on three. One, two, three. Boilers. Good job,